Hello and welcome all on an academy J English guys and I'm Rahul Kaushik today I am going to take lecture number four on surface chemistry okay guys so we will be starting lecture number four and today I am going to take colloids and its classification so I will discuss guys what is colloid and how a colloid is different from a tree solution as well as it is different from a suspension after this guys we will do the classification of colloid how many types of colloids are there and on what basis we can classify them okay guys so after this we will move ahead guys and classification is very important because many a times problems have been asked and about the importance of this topic i want to tell you one thing guys and that point is that in september attempt in September attempt, yes, there were at least 12 to 14 questions before every class. I'm telling you this thing, guys. There were 12 to 14 questions, and in advance as well as every year, there are questions from this topic. And believe me, most of the students take it lightly and they do the problem wrong in the exam. And the problem that is going to come on surface chemistry that will be 99% that will be from NCRT only and still you guys will be doing that wrong still you guys would be doing that wrong right so I'm telling you guys <coughs> hi Kumar Kumar hello everyone so I was just telling you the importance of this topic because every year not just in mains but in advance as well as there is a problem and this time uh, there was a 3rd September test and in 3rd September morning attempt there were three problems from the surface chemistry. Hi Osho. Yes, I am fine. So Osho, I was telling you the importance of surface chemistry and why should we do? Why should we do this surface chemistry guys? So before we start today's class, let me tell you something about myself guys. I am Rahul Kaushik. I worked in Bansai classes quota for continuous 10 years and during my last 10 years guys I was their head of department in last 5 years 2015 to 20 and after that I co-founded my own organization that is Zygyan Education Private Limited and now I am here on an academy India's largest and fastest going online platform to share all my experience and knowledge so guys I mentored 2000 plus ideas yes during last 10 years and now along with it guys i am with you here and will guide you through the and hope i will help you in getting your dream iit or dream college so guys we are also there on the telegram app and the link for our telegram app is also given in the description part of this video Yes, Rani, Asha Rani, you can do the modules if you are doing the module. Um, yes, uh, like Bansar classes. I worked there for last 10 years and there were so many top rankers from Bansar classes quota. Right? So, but do the modules of only one institute. This is what I am telling you. Yes, Osho, ask me. Yes, Osho, ask me. <coughs> what is your issue? Be fast. Any particular issue you want to ask, any particular thing? Yes, tell me. Hi, study material. Hi, study material. So, Asharani, if you are on the plus, then I am telling you. On the plus, you can download the material. Like if I am teaching chemical kinetics, I have uploaded the modules there. If I'm teaching mole concept, I have uploaded the modules there and you can download there. Definitely, if you are doing uh, material of any good institution, any good institution, whether it is Bansa classes, whether it is Resonance, Fitzy, anything, but at a time, do the modules of only one institute. Only one institute, guys. Right? Don't do so many things. Don't do so many things at one time. You can get under 100 as well, not just 300. Yeah. 
you are not getting pdfs on youtube actually i am uh, uploading those pdfs at some link but if you are facing such issue then surely i will check it surely i will check it i don't know many students are saying this okay so i will definitely check it so guys as well i was telling you that we are also there on the telegram app and the link for telegram app or the name of the channel is je underscore english and link is given in the description of this video right guys now i will tell you some simple steps how you can subscribe to an academy just go to play store or app store download an academy's learning app guys once you have downloaded it install it and after installing it you will be directed to this page and on this page guys just click on the plus once you are clicking on the plus you will be getting iitj neat ug foundation and many other courses so if you are preparing for iit then choose the iitj then choose the iitj right once you are choosing it guys then hit the subscription button and after hitting the subscription button guys yes after hitting the subscription button you will be reaching on to this page and on this page remember this code if you are applying this code you will be getting a flat discount of 10% guys let me tell you about the fee structure for one year you have to pay 38,000 and for two year you have to pay 56,000 but guys if you are applying my code okay uh, study material i will take your query just a minute and if you are applying my code rahul cam if you are applying it then instead of 38000 you just have to pay 34000 and instead of 56000 you just have to pay 50400 rupees okay guys study material is asking when j main will take place so i can tell you only this thing Whenever it will take place, we will be knowing it uh, very soon, within next 20 days, 20 to 30 days, because right now counseling is going on and very soon their notification will be out. Very soon notification will be out. Right? And Asha Rani, what are you asking? Sir, if do module, is it necessary to do K. Kumar, Himanshu Pandey, Narendra Vardhi? Actually, Asharani, J.D. Lee, Wiley and Solomons, those are very good books. But as a student, I don't think you will be getting so much time uh, you can do them. Right? So, I will just tell you. I will just tell you, just follow the modules. Once you have done the module of particular institute, then you can go for the books. Otherwise, they are so bulky books. And if you are reading them, you are following them without guidance of some faculty then it would be very difficult then it would be very difficult yes and theory wise my lecture notes are more than enough i'm telling you guys theory wise my lecture notes are more than enough so if you are following my lectures then theory is completed from here okay osho That's great because NCRT is a very good book and for inorganic it's perfect for physical you can get some practice problem there but not enough problems yes so that's why I generally ask you guys to do okay guys so are you ready for today's class you tell me guys are you ready for today's class yes I can't see your thumbs up or yes or anything in the chat box. Yes, Asharani, you can start doing once you have uh, done the modules, like if you are doing the surface chemistry. So once you have done the module of surface chemistry, you are done with the NCRT, then you can go for the books for a particular topic. But make a proper timetable. Don't keep on reading chemistry only. And I'm telling you, make a proper timetable. Suppose every day you are giving three hours to chemistry. Suppose every day you are giving three hours to chemistry and you think today you have already done two hours and one hour is, one hour is left. So you can go for a book. Right? 
So what is your doubt also? Yes, also if you are you are done with you are done with the NCRT, then you can solve the material of some other institute. But now don't solve the basic problems because you are done with the NCRT, you have solved the problems from one institute or one material. Now you can go for the another material. And material should be of different institutes so that you can get different variety of questions. And that would be the best. Right? So now I am moving guys. Colloids. Let's start colloids. Can you see something on your screen guys? What is this? Tell me guys, what is this? So guys, this is milk. This is milk. Right? Now my question is, is your milk a solution? Suspension? Or is it a colloid? So how will you differentiate between these three things? What do you mean by solution? What do you mean by suspension? What do you mean by colloid? Tell me guys. So, yes, again, what is this guys, what is on the left side, yes answer, I will check it, there are some, some more students who are complaining about it, they are unable to download it, I will check it and will get it, will let you know, yes, these are enough, so guys, now tell me please, Yes, what is uh, what is this? It is lemonade with some pepper salt, right? This is also lemonade, but here you have water and lemon only. So, guys, why I am showing you this? Yes, these PDFs are more than enough for JE Advanced. I am telling you, Osho, these are more than enough. So guys, what is the difference? Here I am showing you milk. <coughs> here I am showing you lemonade. Only water plus lemon. And here I am showing you lemonade with some salt. And you can see the particles. You can see. Not my PDFs. After my PDFs, you have to do the practice over it. You have to do the practice over it. Without practice, everything is waste. Okay, Osho. Without practice, everything is waste. So, here I am telling you guys, this is lemonade and this is salt. So, what is the difference here? I don't know your notes get in an academy app or Yes, on, on an academy you can get the modules as well as for practice module you can get there. And there you can get the PDFs of lecture note in annotated form and without annotation. I don't know why I am uploading these PDFs on the YouTube, why they are not available. Okay, also check in the description. Yes, surely I, I don't have to make a video, separate video. I will just talk to the technical guys what is the issue because I am daily sending the PDFs there to them. So why they are not being uploaded, I will check it out. Okay. So now let's start guys. So this is milk here. This is milk. These are lemonade guys. So here you can see the particles and the large particles. If you keep it for some time, what will happen? All those particles will settle down at the bottom. So I will call it suspension. And because particle size is big and due to gravity, they will settle down. <coughs> In this lemonade, it will look like you. Even after six or after 10 or after five days, it will look like it. So I will call it, I will call it the solution. 
and what is this milk i will call it the colloid so guys what is the difference between a colloid a tree solution and between a colloid a tree solution in suspension what is the difference okay answer so i will send these notes yeah this is good idea i will surely send them in the got it so what is going on here so for analogy purpose i can tell you suppose this is the particle size right so if particle size is very big i will call it suspension and if it is very small then i will call it solution and if it is neither very big nor very small then i will call it call it so now you know the difference between suspension you know the difference between colloid you know the difference between solution tell me guys anything you want so it is basically the size of particle and using that size you can distinguish so what is that size so guys i am telling you that if diameter is 1 nanometer 2000 nanometer just a minute if diameter is 1 nanometer to 1000 nanometer then i will call it colloid and if it is more than 1000 nanometer then i will call it suspension and if it is less than 1 nanometer then i will call it solution getting my point so whether a particular particle comes in the range of suspension or it comes in the range of solution it depends it depends so guys let's move ahead there is one more way you can identify here here you can see guys this is this is colloid this is colloid and this is true solution so actually what is going on here so when you are using this light when you are using this light <coughs> when you are using this light this light is visible here but not visible here why because in the true solution particle size is very small you might have seen in your the theaters as well in theaters you might have seen a light is coming from behind and then you can see some particles are moving why however every moment you are inhaling some oxygen but you can't see their molecule you can't see their molecule so what is why you can't see the oxygen and nitrogen molecule but when you are sitting in a theater you can see those molecules the particle of those molecules which are revolving or those dust particles is big so when light collide with them those are visible but when light collide with the oxygen or nitrogen molecule <coughs> they don't become visible and you can't see them okay guys and you can't see them any doubt so guys this is one way and now suppose i am taking here true solution I am taking here colloid, I am taking here suspension, right? And if we are using the torch, we are using the torch. Now, what will happen? <coughs> yes, also, I will check it if there is some issue because we generally upload the PDF. Not I generally, I never upload the PDF on the YouTube. I just send them link and they guys are responsible for uploading it, right? But many PDF, you can get it from the app because on the app they are automatically available after every lecture there we upload i upload those pdfs so i will check it surely i will check it right so guys here i am taking solution i am taking colloid and i am taking suspension and when i am using the torch light guys and let me tell you guys after this class 3:45 pm i will be taking a short quiz on an academy app right and that quiz will be based on the that quiz will be based on the surface chemistry so guys get ready for that so when you are using the torch and light is moving so through the solution this path is not visible but when it is passed through colloid or it is passed through the suspension this 
path will become visible. Why? Because particle size of colloid and suspension is big and when light is colliding with them, you can see their particles. So that path become visible. So the Tyndall effect, the Tyndall effect is a scattering of light. So this is called Tyndall effect guys. So Tyndall effect can be shown by colloids and Tyndall effect can be shown by <coughs> suspension as well. So now I am moving guys. What do you mean by colloid? Now you know the difference between the colloid solution and suspension. So just like we prepare a solution and in solution we say that one part is solute and another is solvent. So solvent is generally present in large excess with respect to modes and solute is present in small excess. Like here if I am taking this water and adding some sugar. So this water will be solvent and sugar will be solute. So what is colloid guys? Like solute and solvent in colloid we call them dispersed phase and we call it dispersion medium. So the component that is present in large quantity. Here you can see this. That is present in large quantity. That will be called dispersion medium. And for analogy purpose I can call it solvent. Like in true solution whatever we call solvent. Like here water is solvent. And the substance which is present in small amount. And the substance which is present in small amount. We call that dispersed phase. So this is dispersed phase guys. This is dispersion medium. You can remember it by analogy of solvent. So when you are mixing them, your solution would be homogeneous. But your suspension will be heterogeneous. <coughs> so this is heterogeneous. So what is colloid guys? Colloid is a heterogeneous system. Note it down. Note prop Please make proper notes. Colloid is a heterogeneous system in which one substance is dispersed as very fine particle in another substance called dispersion medium. Got it? Any doubt? So now I am moving ahead. Now let's move to the colloids. So what is colloid? So I have told you guys. Colloid is a heterogeneous system. Colloid is a heterogeneous system in which one substance is dispersed as very fine particle in another substance called dispersion medium. What it? Called dispersion medium. Any doubt? So guys, colloids range of diameter, how will you identify them? So I have already told you like if I am saying colloid. So their diameter range will be 1000 nanometer to 1000 nanometer, right? And if there is something, there is something size larger than 1000 meter, some size is larger than 1000 meter, tell me guys. Then I will call it suspension. Then I will call it suspension. And if size is less than it, 1 nanometer, then I will call it free solution. So everything depend upon the particle size. Here I am telling you guys. Suppose this is true solution particle. This is colloidal particle. It will be suspension. It will be suspension. Okay guys. It will be sub. Any doubt. Yes guys, tell me now, if you have any doubt, no doubts, so now you know the difference, now you know the difference between, difference between true solution, colloid and suspension. So guys, let's move now, now we will do the classification, so the most important point was that colloids are heterogeneous substance, colloids are heterogeneous substance, they are not homogeneous. Right, so when we are talking about it, guys, now they can be classified on the basis of <coughs> following criteria. And what is that criteria? Yes, they are same. 
he has a study material so you can divide you can classify the colloids you can classify the colloids like on the basis of their physical state physical state of dispersed phase and dispersion medium <clears throat> then on the basis of interaction between dispersed phase dp and dispersion medium d so now onward i will speak it as dp and d are you getting it and then guys there is one more third kind of classification and that is type of particle of dispersed phase you can classify them on the basis of that as well right and how will you do this how will you do this so let's do the first classification on the basis of physical state of dp and d and how will we classify them do you have any idea because many a times problem is asked over this concept many a times so here you can see guys this table is very important along with some examples so if guys your dispersed phase is solid and dispersion medium is solid then such sol will be called solid sol right so here right dispersion dispersed phase right dispersion medium this is dispersion medium guys do some correction over here okay dispersed phase here and this is dispersion medium this table is wrong only just interchange it right yes formulas are same study material don't worry about the formulas they are same right so what i'm telling you guys now uh, let's listen me now listen me carefully so i'm telling you if dispersed phase is solid dispersion medium is also solid then the name of colloid will be known as solid salt and examples remember all these examples gemstone and all colored glasses so in this dispersed phase as well as dispersion medium both will be in solid state okay now let's move ahead now if dispersed phase is liquid and dispersion medium is solid so when you are mixing the liquid in a solid then the mixture form or the colloid form will be known as gel cheese butter and jellies you might have seen the cheese or jellies at your home as well you might have seen every one of you might have seen it so if you are mixing a gas in the solid if you are mixing a gas in the solid then what will happen so when you are mixing a gas in a solid guys you will be get a solid salt you will be getting a solid salt like what are the examples fumi stone rubber etc so guys when you are adding a solid and liquid these are called salts paint and cell fluids when you are adding a liquid into liquid these are called emulsion like milk or hair cream so in the exam it might be asked like milk is an example of they will write it as emulsion gel solid sol are you getting my point so you have to remember the example you have to remember the example along with their phases otherwise you cannot solve the problem otherwise you cannot solve the problem and after this if you are mixing the gas in liquid it will be known as foam so froth whipped cream soap leather etc and if you are mixing a solid in gas it will be aerosol liquid in gas again it will be called aerosol so guys if your dispersion medium is gas then the resultant colloid form <coughs> will be known as aerosol right so now you know the difference between aerosol study material we will take different session for it now focus on the surface chemistry so guys in that case in that case we will be getting there we will be getting their aerosol so always remember it when your dispersion medium is gas then you will be getting aerosol when your dispersion medium is liquid you will be getting either sol emulsion or foam so when foam is foam so when gas is dissolved in the liquid when two liquids are mixed then this is called emulsion 
when solid is mixed in liquid then it will become solid right yes the study material you can solve the problem right so now so now let's move guys uh, so i have taken each and everything from ncrt and if you remember this table believe me guys you are going to solve believe me guys you are going to solve the problem over surface chemistry because many a times i have seen a problem is being asked from this topic only and students don't know the meaning of emulsion they don't know about the examples of emulsion they don't know about the example of gel or foam so you have to remember those examples okay guys so now i'm moving on to the next point so classification was based upon the three factors again i'm telling you one factor was physical state of dispersed waves and dispersion medium now that is clear another factor was another factor was nature of interaction between dispersed waves and dispersion medium and third one is type of particle so now i am taking the nature of interaction between dp and dm dp means dispersed phase and dm is dispersion medium so on the nature of interaction between dispersed waves and dispersion medium colloids are of two types lyophilic and lyophobic so what is this lyophilic so philic means lyo means liquid liquid loving species phobia means liquid hating species so liquid lyophilic and lyophobic what is the main difference between them so lyophilic is something that is liquid loving or solvent loving so when you are mixing the dispersed waves and dispersion medium and the uh, dispersed waves is lyophilic so they will easily mix and a colloid will be formed and in lyophobic if you mix them if you mix them we will never get a solution why because they hate each other they are not ready to mix with them it is like forced marriage yes you can remember it it will be like forced marriage and it is like love marriage so when you mix them they will mix them easily and they will be stable but when you are mixing lyophobic dispersed phase particle with the dispersion medium they will not mix easily they will not mix right guys so if they are not mixed now i am telling you that the lyophilic colloid what do you mean by lyophilic so lyophilic mean liquid loving species and the colloids are directly formed by mixing like gum gelatin just note down these examples gum gelatin starch rubber etc when you mix them with suitable solvent or liquid then these are called lyophilic so lyophilic salts are of three types two uh, what are their characteristics or they are reversible and they are stable now what do you mean by reversible reversible means suppose you have prepared the colloid and these are dispersed phase particle right so suppose you have prepared the colloid now if you evaporate this water and again mix that water this colloid will be again formed that's why we call them reversible and what do you mean by stable stable means these colloidal particle will these colloidal particle will never settle down right they will always keep on moving like it they will never settle down at the bottom normally when we say when something settles down we call it stable but here the definition is reverse but here the definition is reverse guys so i will call it reverse i will call it uh, i will call it stable if it does not settle down and if particle settle down at the bottom then i am not going to call it then i am not going to call it stable any doubt guys please ask any doubt no doubts so let's move let's move next point 
वट डू मीन बाई लायोफोबिक मीन्स सो लायोफोबिक मीन्स लिक्विड हीटिंग सब्सटेंस सो सब्सटेंस लाइक मेटल्स एंड देयर सल्फाइड्स तो लाइक यू कैन टेक कॉपर यू कैन टेक ए जी टू एस तो मेटल एंड देयर सल्फाइड्स वेन दे आर सिंपली मिक्सड विद डिस्पर्जन मीडियम इफ यू आर सिंपली मिक्सिंग दैम इन डिस्पर्जन मीडियम और वाटर और सॉलवेंट दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू मिक्स एंड दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू फॉर्म कॉलाइट तो हाउ विल वी प्रिपेयर कॉलाइट तो टू प्रिपेयर लायोफोबिक कॉलाइट वी हैव टू यूज सम स्पेशल मैथड्स and today i will be discussing those methods as well so guys they will be irreversible in nature it means once you have made the colloid once you have made the colloid now what will happen once your colloid is formed once your colloid is formed after that after that if you evaporate this water if you evaporate this water if you evaporate this water and again mix it no colloid will be formed it is like you might have seen your moms at home when once your butter is formed and your butter is out then if you try to mix that butter again then you are not going to get that butter again so guys this is something which is once formed it can never be revoked so they are irreversible in nature and they are unstable quiz will be starting at 3:45 pm after this class i will take a break of 5 to 10 minute then i will start the quiz okay osho so let's see today who wins the contest 3:45 pm we are having quiz okay guys so now you know that irreversible unstable so what do you mean by irreversible what do you mean by unstable you know unstable means this particle will get settled down at the bottom why because they were not stable so lyophobic salts are unstable lyophilic are stable lyophobic are irreversible lyophilic are reversible right guys so after this i will be telling you <coughs> after this i will be telling you the main difference so what are the examples of lyophilic gum gelatin starch rubber these are natural and you can remember them and other than this if there is metal or metal sulfide then it will come under the category of lyophobic got it so just remember gum gelatin starch rubber etc these are example of lyophilic except them most of the other colloids are lyophobic and you can easily remember them okay guys so now the classification the, the type of particle of the dispersed phase. so when i'm talking about the types of particle of dispersed phase so on the basis of type of particle they are of three types multimolecular macromolecular and we have third one that is associated colloid now this name suggest multi like multi means many multi story building many story building so multi molecular colloid what will happen in multi molecular colloid particle size will be small and many small particle will come close to each other and then they will form a large particle and this large particle will lie in the range of colloid the small particles individually these are in range of true solution so they are not the colloid but when you are mixing them but when they aggregate together you will be getting colloid and i call it multi molecular so what is macro molecular so in macro molecular single molecule will be of that size which will fall in colloidal range so you don't have to aggregate so many other atoms or molecules hello ashwin so guys what is multi molecular colloid so on dissolution a large number of atoms or smaller molecules of a substance aggregate together to form the species having size in the colloid range so when large number of small particles aggregate together 
when large number of small particles aggregate together to form a big particle and size of that big particle is in colloidal range then such colloid is called as multimolecular colloid for example gold salt in gold salt what will happen guys small small gold particles will aggregate together and then they will very size similarly in sulfur salt acid particles will aggregate together and they will aggregate till the size of that final aggregated particles comes in the range of colloidal colloidal range means 1 nanometer to 1000 nanometer right so you got it so now there is one more point what kind of forces are present between those particles so there are simple van der waal forces between these particles when those particles are coming close to each other they are aggregating so what kind of force is there so the kind of force that is there is van der waal force got it guys <clears throat> so now what is macromolecular colloid what is macromolecular colloid now i will discuss macromolecule as name suggest micro means something that is small macro means something that is big so macro molecules are suitable solvent so macro molecule is itself large enough to be in range of 1 nanometer to 1000 nanometer that is the range of colloid particle right so macro molecule particle when you directly dissolve them in the solvent colloid will be formed and such colloids are called macro molecular colloids so guys note it down when they are dissolved in suitable solvent they form the solutions in which size may be in colloidal range such system are called macromolecular colloid are you getting my point yes <coughs> ashwin osho everyone so guys the colloids are quite stable and they resemble like true solution in many respects such colloids those will be formed those are relatively more stable than multimolecular multimolecular right is it at 4 pm okay let me check just a minute maybe i forgot the time just a minute no it's 3 45 pm It is not 4 pm, it is 3.45 pm, the surface chemistry quiz. Yes, Osho. So now let's move. So now I am moving guys. So examples of naturally occurring macromolecules are starch, cellulose, proteins and enzymes. Right? And those of man-made molecules are polythene, nylon, polystyrene, synthetic rubber, etc. So guys, these are all examples. These are all examples of macromolecules. Okay. So now you know the molecule. Now you know the molecules, guys. Yes. Okay, I got your point. I got your point. In Nepal, it will be 4 p.m. at that point of time. Right? In Nepal, it will be 4 p.m. Yes. Let's see, guys. So now, examples are done, guys. Now, the most important point now I'm going to discuss. What are missiles? What are missiles? So let's talk about the missiles guys, here are uh, missiles, first I have to show you guys, examples of missile, soap, soap, so soap is, uh, let me take sodium stearate, that is C17, S35, COONA, right? Yes, Asharani, I can take up your query because 3.40 p.m. I am taking a session over. 3.40 p.m. I am taking a session over. What? 
tomorrow i will teach chemical equilibrium so when i am talking about the sodium stearate what will happen so guys just a minute when i am taking c17 h35 coona it will give you c17 h35 co and it will be plus na so it is giving you the ions it is giving you the ions and once it is giving you the ion it will be acting as normal electrolyte so if you are taking the water and inside the water you are adding sodium stearate so this sodium stearate will give you these ions so this will simply act as electrolyte because what are electrolytes so electrolytes are those substances which provides ion when they are dissolved in suitable solvent okay guys now i will start if you increase its amount suppose initially you were adding 0.1 millimole then you are adding 0.2 millimole if you are adding 0.3 millimole then it will aggregate and on aggregate it will be forming a colloid so at low concentration it will behave like a normal electrolyte but as you increase the concentration it will aggregate together and form a big particle and you will call that particle as colloid right so once you are calling it as colloid now there are some substances which at low concentration behave as normal or strong electrolyte but at high concentration they exhibit colloidal behavior at low concentration guys they exhibit behavior like a electrolyte but at high concentration they exhibit behavior like a colloidal particle so the aggregate particle is called mission aggregate particle is called mission okay guys so here i am telling you so initially the particles were like it so what is this so when i write c17 h35 co and a so this is big molecule like it you can see the carbon right and finally you will be getting o and n so generally we denote it like it so this is the carbon part and i call it hydrophobic tail and i call it head this head is hydrophilic so what is the difference hydrophobic phobia means dar carry right it is something that will move away from the water hydro means water for water we use this term hydro and hydrophilic means water loving species i hope you got it yes i am taking all these definitions directly from ncert i am not changing anything right kavya yes so now what is the formation mission formation mechanism so guys like dissolve like under normal condition when it will behave like electrolyte all these particles which i form like it this is the head this is the tail so when i'm talking about the head and tail when i'm talking about the head and tail, so under normal condition it will be like this but when you increase its amount when you increase its amount more and more sodium stearate you are adding what will happen they will club like it they will club like it okay and once they are being clubbed now all these particles all these particles will move in a group and this group i call it colloid right guys so micelles these are the substances which at low concentration behaves as electrolyte but at high concentration they behaves as but at high concentration they behave as colloid got it guys so the formation of micelle take place only above a particular temperature called craft temperature and above a particular concentration called tmc critical micelle concentration 
so here i was telling you like in one liter if you are adding one millimole no michelle is being formed if you are adding two millimole no michelle is being formed but if you are adding 0.3 millimole here you were adding 0.1 and 0.2 so michelle formation takes place so this 0.3 millimole is called cmc cmc so now you know the michelle and its meaning what is cmc guys critical michelle concentration it is 0.3 here so below 0.3 there will be no michelle but above 0.3 there will be missile formation its concentration will be called cmc and the temperature above which this form <coughs> the temperature is called craft temperature so here you can see this is oil guys this is oil so now i will discuss the cleaning action what do you mean by cleaning action so i told you that this c17 in local language in desi bhasa hum log ise kya bolte so soap means sabun so sabun ka kya kaam hota hai what is the function of soap so soap basically uh, cleans the clothes so how will they clean the clothes now i'm telling you guys there is a head and then this is head and this is tail and this tail is hydrophobic this head is hydrophilic getting my point so hydrophobic hydrophilic so this will be water loving species this will be water hating so it will be polar it will be non polar why i am telling you because there is a rule in inorganic you might have heard about it yes in 10th yes away you are right so there is a rule <coughs> you might have heard about it that like dissolve like so if inside a cloth some impurity or some dust is present then that dust will be either polar or non polar so we have both type of component present suppose that is a grease or oil so grease or oil it is non polar so now what will happen so if i zoom in on so this non polar part will get dissolved into it and this polar part will be this polar part will be pointing towards the water or the polar solvent now this polar part is inside it and what will happen now this polar part will take some of the oil with it so when you rinse the cloth all this thing will be removed so it will remove it and all these particles will be removed this is cloth this is cloth so your cloth will be cleaned so guys this is the cleaning action of soap note it down hydrophilic part hydrophobic part so again here you can see so now you can tell your mom that don't use don't use uh what should i say a stick just rinse the cloth and if you are using the proper soap or proper detergent then your clothes will be clean but if detergent is not good then it is not going to be clean right yes osho kavya abhi anybody tell me guys so here you can <coughs> take the snapshots of it <coughs> and guys please remember 3:45 pm we have a quiz i am taking a quiz on surface chemistry okay guys so get ready for that quiz 3:40 pm i will be starting it after this class guys i will be taking 2 minute rest and uh, 5 minute rest and then we will start okay guys so now let's move ahead guys methods of preparation of colloid how do we prepare the colloids so there are two methods first of all dispersion method and condensation so here when i am talking about the colloid colloid are of two types lyophilic and lyophobic 
तो वेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द लाइफिक वट विल एपन गाइन तो इन लाइफिक यू सिंपली मिक्स डिस्पर्स फेज एंड डिस्पर्स एंड मीडियम एंड यू विल बी गेटिंग कॉलोइट बट वट विल लाइफोबिक इन लाइफोबिक गाइज वट विल हैपन इफ यू आर मिक्सिंग इफ यू आर मिक्सिंग डिस्पर्स फेज एंड डिस्पर्स एंड मीडियम your colloid will not be prepared because that will be unstable so to prepare to prepare lyophobic colloid to prepare lyophobic colloid guys we need dispersion we need condenses so there are two types of method one we call dispersion another we call condenses right so what is dispersion method here what is dispersion so dispersion means to break down in dispersion method what we are going to do we will take a big particle we will break it into the smaller ones till it is broken down into such a small particles whose range lies in the colloidal range okay guys whose range lies in the colloidal range i hope now you are getting it so this is dispersion and condensation so in dispersion a big particle will be broken down into smaller one and in condensation what will you do small small particle will aggregate together till their size comes into the colloidal range and this method will be called condensation method so what are dispersion methods guys so there are four methods mechanical dispersion then we have electro dispersion then we have ultrasonic and peptidization and what are condensation methods guys i will discuss the condensation methods as well yes so exchange of solvent is there bredig sark method is there so i will discuss each and every point so first we will take the dispersion method so how dispersion methods will help us yes and after this i will be taking after this i will be taking guys condensation methods exchange of solvent change of physical state and chemical method right so we will be taking it so what are these condensation methods exchange of solvent change of physical state then chemical methods so guys each and every point we are going to discuss and after this i will tell you in the next class the purification how do we purify the <coughs> colloids uh, using dialysis using ultra filtration and using electrodialysis so what is dialysis and electrodialysis what is ultra filtration and how do we use it so these are all the points guys and in the next class we will be discussing all these points then i will be discussing the properties of colloid their physical properties their mechanical properties their optical properties their electrical properties each and every point we will discuss in the next class okay guys so this is all for today guys and i hope you really enjoyed i hope you really enjoyed today's class guys so don't forget to share it and like it and 3:45 pm i am going to start quiz on app so this quiz would be on an academy's app guys and the topic will be surface chemistry so be ready for this quiz guys be ready for it so <clears throat> again i am telling you guys we are there on the telegram app you can join us and name of our channel is j_english and you can find the link for that channel in the description part of this video so guys now step number 1 i will tell you how you can subscribe to an academy just go to play store or down app store download an academy's learning app and then click on the install and once you are installing it just click on the plus and after clicking on the plus you will be getting idj once you are getting the idj option guys then hit the subscription button so guys once you are hitting it then i am telling you for one year you have to pay 38000 for two year you have to pay 56000 but guys <coughs> if you are applying my code rahul ke remember this rahul my name and game for chemistry if you are applying this rahul game guys then for one year you have to pay 34000 and for two year you have to pay 50000 so remember this code guys 
and now you might be thinking what are the advantages of taking plus so i'm telling you the advantages guys <clears throat> first of all you will have access to not just my video lecture but the video lecture and content of all the educators who are teaching for physics chemistry mathematics and then guys your course would be structured like after every class you will be getting practice problems you will be getting modules bpps and you will have live quizzes that's important and along with live quizzes once your topic is over guys you will be getting you will be getting a mega quiz and every fourth class will be doubt clearing session so if you have any doubt or facing any issues with any concept you can clear your doubts okay guys and not uh, just you can clear your doubts but their almost interaction would be one to one okay guys so these are all the benefits which you are going to get once you are subscribing to an academy's plus program so anything guys you want to ask so again after 10 minutes i will meet you guys with a quiz so uh, just remember this code guys rahul kem and take care of you i will again meet you after 10 minutes okay guys so take care of you guys and thank you thank you very much guys